Okay, morning boys. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but I'm going to do my best. We're going to go through a little bit of the UV catastrophe and try to explain it in terms of uh, black body radiation and going from classical physics to modern physics and why we needed a change in mathematics to get this to work. So with the UV catastrophe, they originally looked at atoms vibrating. When they vibrate, you get this continuous EM wave being pushed out, which meant that the more it vibrated, the higher the energy electromagnetic wave. So basically, as you increase the temperature, the more vibrations and you get a higher electromagnetic wave produced. And that should have been infinite. As you got higher and higher temperatures, the wave should have gone higher and higher and got into the range of X-rays and gamma rays, but they were finding this was not happening. So for example, as you increase the temperature, you should have got basically more and more energy out of the the wave, so we might have had visible light here, UV, X-rays, gamma. Yeah. That is how classical physics would have explained how atoms release energy as they increase their temperature, but this wasn't happening. What they actually saw was at higher energies, the curve started to come down and classical physics could not explain why this curve was coming down. So there needed to be some new ideas come in and, and Max Planck started to get some pretty good ideas. He still tried to use classical physics but he produced a new idea that there was actually chunks of energy coming out rather than a continuous wave. Okay, this is where Something like the Bohr model explains it so well. You remember all this stuff happened before the Bohr model was invented, but we know now that electrons jumping energy shells is actually what is releasing the energy, the electromagnetic energy. And of course we know now that it's all quantized, e.g. it has to go in stepwise form. So I'm just going to go on to a, a little slide. You can see there that because the classical theory didn't match the experimental data, there had to be something else happening. So, at shorter wavelengths, it predicted infinite energy, but of course, this wasn't happening, it was dropping back. So this contradiction, they call it the ultraviolet catastrophe. And I'm going to explain it using the Bohr model. At low wavelength, it agreed pretty much. Okay, we know that electrons just dropping down energy shells in the inner energy shells probably release a little bit of a visible light, maybe in the red range, maybe some of the larger drops. Might have gone in the blue light range. And even some of the largest drops might have gone into the ultraviolet, the lower ultraviolet range. But what happens if the electrons, remember the electrons have to, have to put energy in to get them up an energy level and then they drop back down and release energy. What happens when the electron gets shot so far out, it just basically disappears. It can't drop back into the atom 
And so we weren't seeing that massive infinite energy being produced because the electron had gone outside the actual atom. So that's why it agrees at lower energies, but only very, very little ultraviolet light was produced because the electrons were shot so far outside the atom they couldn't come back. And that's basically what explains the curve coming back down. Very little of this energy was occurring because basically the electrons weren't coming back to the atom, they were disappearing altogether. These parts of the curve in the inner shells of the electrons, the electrons were just ducking down one or two or three energy levels. That occurred quite well, the experimental data, but it took Max Planck, okay, the idea that there must have been some sort of uh, quantized factor, what we now know as photons, to actually work all this out. Now Max Planck was a pretty good scientist, he worked all this out through experimentation. But, he tried to use classical physics to work it out. And he couldn't get the numbers to agree. So Max Planck was, was fantastic and he used experiments to work this out but he couldn't work out the mathematics. It actually took Einstein about 1905 to start to sort this issue out mathematically. And of course, this was the birth of uh, quantum physics. And, and of course, quantum physics is the standard now some great scientists, Schrodinger, Pauli, Heisenberg, developed quantum physics, explains everything, but it did take Max Planck to put all that experimental data together for them to work. So hopefully that will explain black body radiation a little bit better to you. Uh, I'm gonna go on to photoelectric effect next. So I'll post this video up and then hopefully at the end of the week we'll do a bit more on photoelectric effect and I'll do an experiment for you.